Hello, this is Dr. Kim jong -il. Today, I will give a lecture on skeletal factors among the causative factors of malocclusion. Skeletal origin is mainly evaluated whether there is a high angle or low angle. Class 1, 2, 3, asymmetry vertical dimension difference, and so on. Let's compare the high angle open bite and the low angle deep bite. First, the high angle open bite has weak muscle strength, but the tooth movement is relatively fast. And the low angle deep bite has strong muscle strength, so the tooth movement is slow. That is, the high angle is decreased bite force, hypotrophic muscle size, muscular line of force is oblique, and the molar position is located in anterior, increased alveolar bone height, narrow alveolar bone width, high and narrow palatal vault, deep buccal vestibules, short lip length, the tooth movement is fast, which means that the CF is less than 150. Low angle is increased bite force, hypertrophic muscle size, muscular line of force is vertical. Muller position is direction in line of force, decreased alveolar bone height, wide alveolar bone width, broad and flat palatal vault, shallow buccal vestibules, long lip length, tooth movement is slow, which means CF is greater than 150. Open bite and deep bite of vertical relationships are associated with muscle activity and UOP. And class 2 and class 3 of anteroposterior relationships are related to POP and tooth development. Skeletal origin requires first observation of the patient's skeletal framework. That is, anteroposterior relationship, vertical relationship, Posterior vertical dimension. Differenced in alveolar bone height, ramus height, body height, and so on. Sassoni categorized the skeleton into nine types class 1, 2, 3, open bite, and deep bite in an anteroposterior relationship. I also classify the skeleton into nine types class 1 high angle, class 1, class 1 low angle. Class 2 high angle, class 2, class 2 low angle, class 3 high angle, class 3, and class 3 low angle. First, the skeleton is classified through a PDI. Remember that if it is less than 77, it is class 2, and if it is greater than 85, it is class 3. Next, look at the combination factor. If it is less than 155, it is classified as a high angle, and if it is above 155, it is classified as a low angle. And class 3 has a large APDI, so more than 160 is classified as a low angle. So, you should first evaluate the skeleton through the figures of ODI, APDI, CF. That is, 71, 69. 140 is class 2 high angle, 82, 75. 157 is class 2 low angle. What does class 2 high angle mean? In the anteroposterior relationship, it is a class 2 relationship and it grows backwards and downwards. Class 2 low angle is a class 2 relationship in the anteroposterior and shows a tendency of deep bite. In other words, since class 2 high angle rotates posteriorly, class 2 malocclusion may become severe. Class 3 low angle can lead to severe class 3 malocclusion as the mandible tends to protrude forward. On the other hand, class 2 low angle is a good direction as the mandible tends to move anteriorly. But vertical problems may vary from patient to patient. Here is the evaluation of the posterior vertical dimension PVD. Posterior vertical dimension measures the distance from the PNS to the mandibular plane. 
I usually consider 43 mm to be a normal value. Evaluate whether this distance is sufficient or not enough. In general, PVD is sufficient for class 3 malocclusion. But PVD is not sufficient for class 2 malocclusion. The following are the left and right differences of PVD. In other words, it is to evaluate whether there is a difference in length between the peers on both sides. PVD is closely related to POP. Flat POP in class 3 malocclusion, steep POP in class 2 malocclusion, and midline deviation in class 2 malocclusion. This patient can see that the left side is considerably shorter than the right side by looking at the ramus height on both sides, which POP is steeper at this time, the left side is steeper than the right side. This means that the POP on the left is more steep and the mandible is deviated to the left. Also, when the mandible deviates to the left, the posterior teeth on the left side of the mandible become mesial inclination to compensate for this. So far, we have identified skeletal origin, dental origin, and environmental origin. The basic concept in MEAW orthodontic is that these three factors are closely related. In other words, the vertical relationship will affect the sagittal relationship, and the transverse relationship can also be affected. The vertical relationship means the vertical dimension, especially the posterior vertical dimension. It is sufficient for class 3 malocclusion and insufficient for class 2 malocclusion, which is also closely related to the occlusal plane. When a person grows up, some change to class 2 and some to class 3. Is it genetic or is it environmental? In the case of severe skeletal deviation, there are many genetic factors. But if you have a normal profile, I think environmental factors will also have a lot of influence. At this time, the tooth will erupt in the direction of adaptation. TMJ passively adapts to show structural change. And the muscle is actively adaptation during the eruption of the tooth causing functional change. Let's it summarize. Class 2 and class 3 malocclusion is a skeletal problem. These skeletal problems show differences in the posterior, vertical dimension and the occlusal plane, which are dental problems. So skeletal problems can be caused by dental problems. In other words, it means that the skeletal problem can be corrected by solving the dental problem. For example, by adjusting the occlusal plane, treatment may be possible. The causative factors of malocclusion are skeletal origin, dental origin, and environmental origin. Between skeletal origin and environmental origin, muscle activity mainly affects. Between skeletal origin and dental origin, dental compensation within individual skeletons is important. And between environmental origin and dental origin, muscle function adaptation and loading are important. Thank you for watching.